Hi, this is um, a demonstration of the pseudo CNC controller controlling the um, robot arm. It's a five axis robot arm, but I'll be showing you two axes to try and keep this demonstration relatively simple. So what we're looking at here is um, a robot controller, and I'm just going to move to the next page on here so I can show you. And it's built up of a, an architecture, and that architecture consists of a robot, uh, which is controlled by a computer. It goes out to a communications network, and hanging off that is a very really extended communications or a number of pickaxes. They're known as A, B, C, D, and E, and they actually control what goes on in the robot. I might show you the, uh, the manual controller in another video, but there's a master controller, and that pickaxe, that master pickaxe, is essentially just looking after timing. Now, there is a piece missing off here, which is called the interlock device, and each pickaxe, each axis here, is interlocked back to the master to prevent code from executing uh, incorrectly. What we're going to look at is the what's called the G codes, this, this area here, and how that's post processed. Um, we'll have a quick overview of the pickaxe command file. We won't be seeing a comms layer, it's a very simple comms layer. It just takes the pickaxe command file and puts it onto the communication network with a bi-directional communication with the pickaxe master. That master essentially uh, sees the code coming through, waits for the interlock to be raised by all the axes involved in that particular movement or all the pickaxes involved in that movement and then it requests the next line. It's a very simple one, it's only a few lines long of code. It's extremely simple. Um, these are the G codes. Um, they're pretty extensive now. I've got a um, uh, number of G codes and they're all tested. Uh, and we'll see what happens. We've got uh, codes that control the axis. They're called G00s. There's time delays. There's um, repeats. Um, there's find a home point. So in, in the gearbox modification for this robot and the other, you know, other robots built using the same approach, there's that they can find the, the um, home point. You can define modal macros, so you can repeat pieces of code. That'll be in the third video. We can move an axis of distance. That's quite important. Um, we can specify a rate of travel or a speed of travel, and then we've got this series of stops, and those stops are actuated through the um, the master pickaxe. We can turn devices on and off. Like there's a lamp in the robot, and we can repeat all the code. Finally, there's a thing called the R codes, and the R codes really configure the axis. An axis. We'll see, we won't be sitting. Well, I'll explain those as they go by. But we're going to keep it simple. We're going to just run some uh, codes. So let's just give it a that a second. So essentially, what we've got here is um, an editor. I'm going to be using the. Uh, I use for this. I use the um, Edit Plus Three. Why do I use that? Because I can actually execute the code, and I can see what's actually going on in this bottom window down here. I can scroll through that. And uh, it allows me to post pre pro process and test the processor and before I submit it to the pickaxe. It's a robot. You get the code wrong, the robot goes wrong. There isn't any, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a risk involved. So in the, hand, in, the, in the robot, in the manual controller, that's been modified as well. Um, that has a stop button, an emergency stop button, quite clearly. Um, if you do program it incorrectly, it will do exactly what you ask, and it will hit the stops, and it will crash into things. Uh, this is the manual controller. You should be able to see my arm now, uh, and that manual controller, um, essentially, um, I'll put that on the desk. Uh, I can move the robot, and that's the manual control. It's using the same protocol, okay? And I can send an axis home. I've added a couple of extra buttons in here. And it's now finding its home position for that axis. At any time, I can press um, a stop button, emergency stop button, and that will kill. Firstly, it will stop the motors from operating. Then it will just recycle the pickaxes. Pickaxes are um, essentially the same for each axis, and um, they're just configured through a dip switch on the side or a toggle switch, and um, depending how you want to do it. Uh, but it, they're all the same code. There's no difference on the code. So let's have a look what we can do. Keep it very simple. Uh, we're going to move an axis, uh, um, 100 units, and that's called a G91 command. And I'm going to move it, G91, A100, and then I'm going to tell it to go home. So doing typing live, very dangerous. But we should see the um, post-processor. Uh, and essentially what happened then 
is the green screen is the output this is the contents of the post processor and that's then passed to the to the robot now the business card is there only for your uh, review so you can see it returning to the same place okay so I've just moved it 100 units I can move it um, in the B axis uh, 50 units and then I can tell it to, to go home as well so I can say to it G28 which is a go home command you have to learn these if you're going to use it and I can submit it so we're seeing it operate live okay the commands in the green screen are the commands going down to the pickaxe and there we go we can see it moving backwards and forwards on the side of the robot there's some mar other markers so I can see it's actually at home and they're just there for visual I can um, do some clever things I can obviously um, put up the commands on the same line it just post processes them differently and um, I'll put a B25 A15 so I'm going to rotate this around um, actually I can pull that back I'll pull that back 200 and we can just see this thing swing um, backwards and forwards which will be quite interesting here we go I'll um, it post process it in those few seconds um, these are just a, it's a macro inside of the um, and there we go we can see the robot swing to the left swing to, and it's swinging up and around it's moving at full speed and I can control that level of speed what I can now do is I can take these codes and what we've, what we've just seen is we can do multiple axes so I could do all five axes simultaneously simply by addressing them um, A, B, C, D and E etc and in this video all I'm going to show you is um, a quick repeat and this is how we do a quick repeat and these are just repeat the macro to repeat the, the same, same code uh, four times a G10 is a repeat code command and the M97 is actually execute it what I should do I should put um, an MOO at the end which I believe as from memory is a, a stop let's have a look oh sorry it's, it's uh, end of program is an MO2 I'll put an MO2 but you don't need that it just runs out the end but you could put an MOT you can put comments in here you can uh, do lots of things uh, like that let's just have a look at that the output of that what I can do I can show the output this is the test post process and you can see that these are the command strings going down to the pickaxe that's how it interprets them the pickaxe then picks those up and with interlock running it prevents it from um, running um, moving through uh, command lines until all the axes have uh, completed their task let's execute that into the pickaxe it's the same uh, macro is just um, an, an execute command so it's gone down once. Let's come back. I think the, kids, the robot's moved on the desk. It's not fixed to my desk. So it does tend to move around. So we might see that business card move. And we have. There we go. It's rocking on the base. Yeah, I haven't screwed it down. There we go. Oh no, it's the fourth repetition. And so there we go. That's the um, and the, what I wanted to show. Very simple. What we've seen there is um, movement of two axes using the post processor. Um, post processor um, essentially uh, converts that into these strings, and the pickaxes then consume that in a timely manner. That's the end of this video.